Okay, so listen, you guys. I want to make another um, quick video for you. I was listening to some YouTube videos about um, narcissistic abuse, and it kind of turned me on to some stuff that had happened before. And things that I didn't really think of as abuse or really, you know, cop to the fact that I've been through. But remember, for me, it's been seven years, so you guys might think that I'm harping on a dead subject that I should just let go of already, but you should know that I've been putting up with this shit for seven years um, from this person and his numerous friends that have participated in repressing my life because um, because I refuse to keep dating him. So let's um, let's go over this, okay? First of all, um, and I'll post the links to these two videos in um, the description because it's really pivotal 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 to what I'm talking about so um, first of all um, I want to talk about vetting people before you date them yeah um, I have a history of autistic meltdowns after dealing with people's crimes so um, I have I have TROs you know I'm not a saint I'll admit it um, but this dude when I checked his record, they're all against him. So it's all for, it seems like it's all pretty much stuff and the people involved, like um, like he was stalking them, okay? So um, check on people's criminal backgrounds before you date them. Um, and I only thought of that because he made, when he was um, assaulting me, he was bragging about TROs or something, like, like that was my karma and I'm like, dude, made me check into his background wow boy was i shocked okay so um obsession they become obsessed with you they don't live their own life he became a copycat he had to get the same kind of um he had to get a bow because he knows that i'm into archery and it turned him on when i came over one day with my bow to try to help him with this pig problem and mind you i have very little idea what I'm doing with a bow, okay? I'm very amateur, barely be a beginner, so I don't know what I'm doing. But I noticed that um, when I went over, stupidly, went back to his house um, this year, um, I noticed that all of a sudden he'd acquired a bow. And, he, of course, he had to get a nicer one than what I had because, you know, that's how he competes is he copies everything I do and then because... I guess somebody gives him money. I don't know if it's his family that doesn't know what kind of a person he is or the government or I think it's the government. I think he's a welfare welfare and pretends to be crazy, which it's funny because he actually doesn't have to pretend. But anyway, um, he even fucking copied my haircut. Um, okay, so he fucking copied my haircut. He copied my clothing. He copied the things I said. He even tried to act all spiritual, like he knows what he's talking about. But I noticed that he actually didn't even know what he was saying when it came to spiritual matters. He was just repeating words and then repeating them over and over again, like, oh, tree of life, or oh, this, about whatever, you know. For me, it would be Buddhism, but he would always get into the occult, which he clearly didn't really know anything about. Because if you know anything about the occult, you know that you can't practice dark um, things against people or psycho dark psychology against people without severe karmic retribution, right? Because it'll rebound on you. Because that's that's just physics. That's just nature. It's nothing mystical about it, right? You fuck people up with with uh, bad intentions, you get fucked up. Okay, so, um, oh yeah, he dug a pit. He dug a pit in his yard, and he showed it to me, and then he bragged about, like, how it was like a grave, and there was a frog down in the pit. I'm not joking, okay? I'm not making any of this up. There was a frog down in the pit, and he was looking at me like, why don't you jump down in that pit and rescue it? But I realized... That pit was like exactly like my height, like 5'10 or 6 feet. If I jumped in there, he could fucking hit me over the head with a shovel, 
kill me and bury me and I would be disappeared forever. You know, nobody would have any idea where I was. So I kind of looked at him and he had that smirk on his face like he did when he was cheating on me while we were dating. Like, go ahead, idiot. Go ahead, do it. Jump in that pit. And I just looked at him and I didn't do it. And he looked really disappointed. But anyway, um, <clears throat> okay, the dating and the trolling. Um, all of a sudden, after I refused to date him again, um, because he was, because it, it sure seemed like I didn't have evidence at the time, but I found out later that he was massively cheating on me, okay? That um, I would go online on Grindr. And these guys would fucking appear and they'd be like, I've heard you're bipolar and we shouldn't date you. And I'd be like, well, I'm dealing with a stalker. So if you expect me to be nice to you, despite the fact that you're now acting like a stalker, you can fucking forget it. Then they would fucking disappear and block and try to go away before I could take a screenshot of their account. Right. This happened over and over and over, over again for like seven years so for like three years i wasn't able to get a date not even one fucking date okay not that i was trying really hard i was trying to work on myself um i knew after this last narcissist and it being like the eight or ninth or tenth or eleventh narcissist in my life that was like a raging lunatic thief stealing everything from me that i had to just hang out by myself for a while but still after that I was over it and after COVID especially I wanted to get out there and date and you know I'm a gay man so I like sex okay you know there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with enjoying physical pleasure and then to have that denied to you because somebody's smearing your name with the entire gay community of the entire island you know, it's really tough to deal with. And I know I'm 50 years old. You know, I'm not as dateable as I was when I was 25. But, you know, it shouldn't have been that bad. Especially with people showing up and, uh, you know, obviously his friends, you know, trolling me constantly. Just like fucking beating me down psychologically. Telling me all kinds of bullshit and things they heard about me. And things that weren't true, actually. So, you know sucks for them to believe that but it sucked for me because it affected my life right and um yeah so let's see oh let's go back over this um sabotage okay i already told you guys about how he was probably sabotaging my drinking water um i think i posted pictures of my water filter earlier it's broken appearance it's not because of something he did that's because of me trying to protect it from him um i would come home and find my water filter full of like black soot and i kept it kept happening over and over so i moved it in front of a security camera and it stopped happening all of a sudden isn't that strange right and it wasn't after my dad helped me out and bought some new filters and stuff you know i wasn't expecting to have to buy filters so soon so i wasn't prepared for it so he helped me out bought new filters just in case and it kept happening because he was probably still doing it right up until the camera got changed right because all of a sudden it wasn't happening anymore and it's still not so um so let me go over this list okay um the silent treatment here's another one man when they don't want you to have any fun they'll fucking just disappear on you so you'll like be in a relationship and all of a sudden they'll just like stop returning your phone calls or they won't show up for meetings or they won't show up for dates or they um just fucking disappear and they punish you you know to show that you did something wrong and that's one of their main ways of punishment so watch out for that you know if somebody gives you the silent treatment won't talk to you you know i've been susceptible to a large number of narcissists in my life and i've noticed that they've all done that so they'll alternate between rage and then utter silence okay and that rage would be indicated by as if you've seen some of the shorts on my channel um you know being actually physically attacked right 
Um, another thing is gaslighting. You know, um, very, very uh, obvious. Everybody is using this phrase now. But gaslighting is like what Donald Trump does. You know, he tells you, like, not to believe your lying eyes. Like, don't believe what you're seeing. Believe what I'm telling you instead, right? You know, um, like, you know, he would he would insult me like say like oh adam's not even that good looking anymore because he gained all this weight well what he didn't tell his um his fucking flying monkey friend was that he'd been keeping me at his house like not able to leave like he would just like keep like talking to me and like saying like he would like fucking commit suicide or get all you know upset if i left and so i would just end up at his house for like hours and hours doing nothing like i couldn't work on my on my computer stuff i couldn't work up on any of my studying for school i couldn't do anything i had to always just listen to him and he would just tell me stuff that wasn't true like you know adam's like ugly and fat now and so i can't date him and you know all this stuff but the gaslighting part of it is, is that he's the one controlling the gaslight, right? He's holding the knob and I've lived in a, I've, I've lived in a house with actual gaslighting from the 1800s. So I know what it's like, you know, the person can take the knob and turn the knob and the, the light increases like a Coleman lantern, right? So what they'll do is they'll fucking turn up the heat on you, you know, they'll, um, They'll tell you that you're shit. They'll tell you that you're ugly. They'll tell you that you're fat. And then they'll make you ugly and fat because they're feeding you bad food and they'll um, make you unhappy. So whenever people see you, you're always frowning and sad and now you're overweight and now you're addicted to substances because, you know, they've gotten you addicted to the, to the substances. And then, you know, they might even be fucking putting shit in your food which is what i'm pretty sure was happening with him because i wouldn't have had sex with him until we were um until we had a drink and then um and then another time he like openly like gave me a pill and like i thought and i don't know why i fell for it because i've fallen for that trick before and i was date raped the last time somebody handed me a pill so i'm pretty sure that he did it to me again and it's, I don't know, chalk it up to my extreme naivete and probably being on the spectrum. I'm, you know, I'm not diagnosed yet, so I'm not going to say I'm autistic or ADHD, but um, it's seriously being considered and I'm undergoing diagnosis now. So, you know, I'm going to consider it for now. Okay. And also note that narcissists love to take advantage of people in the spectrum. Why? Because people in the spectrum love to work out. So they're usually in good shape to they're mentally vulnerable because they um, they don't always know what they're getting into with socially with other people. And um, three, once they've used up that person, they can discard them and nobody will believe what the person is saying so that um, they can get away with the crime scot free, which is what happened in my case. OK, so I'm not saying I'm on the autistic or ADHD spectrum, but let me just say that it's seriously being diagnosed right now okay so give me a little bit of grace in that direction um also stonewalling and triangulation okay so i think stonewalling is kind of like when you just kind of you know um put down a blank face and pretend that the other person doesn't mean anything to you in the middle of a intense relationship that happened to me numerous times um, the triangulation, um, he would like call me up and, and, or he would just fuck it. Okay. Let get this. He would show up at my place and just grab me by the crotch and then, or put, take my hand and put it on his crotch to show me that he was aroused to just like, you know, have sex with him. And then, um, and then so that I would go over to his house because he couldn't stand to be anywhere but his house, right? Or have sex anywhere but his house. So, um, hold on a second. 
need to maintain here. Hold on, give me a sec. So triangulation, that was the next subject, okay. Let me uh, move my character around here in this game. I fucking love Death Stranding. Beautiful game. So, um, yeah, so, okay. So triangulation. So he would, he would tell me to come over, you know, like he wanted to, to, you know, to have sex, which is fine. Cause I was up for it. You know, you know, I'd be like, sure. You know, two lonely guys, let's go do it. And, um, um, I would go over there and he'd fucking have somebody over there be like, why do you have other people around if you want to make, if you want you and me to make love? And it would be like, you know, some friend he'd picked up by the side of the road, like, you know, and then he would treat them like they were made of gold. Like I remember this one lady, like in her seventies or eighties, he picked her up to help her out or something and she was going to give him some pots and pans or something for helping her out and he just treated her like like she was the king and 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 like barely looked at me and like basically like I was supposed to sit in a corner by myself while he treated this stranger whom I'd never heard of before and he didn't bother to really introduce her or anything to me and then and then insult me in front of me with her. So, you know, that's called triangulation. It's when they use other people against you. Now, mind you, this guy did plenty of that in other ways with my neighbors. Like, he got my neighbors all turned against me, which is how I ultimately got arrested and in jail all that time. But anyway, that's, for, that's in another video. But, um, okay, mirroring. Here's another thing that he did and I think I've already mentioned that is that he had to copycat everything I did he had to get a bow and get into archery he had to um you know like make clothing like I make my own clothing like I cut my own tank tops out of shirts and stuff and he would be doing that you know I paint my walls because I'm an artist and that's what I do and then I noticed he had to he was painting the walls of his cabin and then you know, um, I had a garden and, that I was working on and I'm, it's kind of a halfway dead project right now that I'm reviving. But anyway, I noticed that he had a garden and his garden had to be perfect. And, you know, never mind, it barely has any food in it. Whereas mine is like loaded with food 24 seven, even after being attacked by the pigs, but whatever. You know, he he just had to do everything I did and he had to do it better because he's younger and has more energy, blah, 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 you know, better body. So whatever. OK, whatever. And then, OK, here's the other thing. Projection. He would project all his problems on me. So make me the crazy person. So I was always the one who was getting in trouble for the kinds of stuff that he would do and get away with because he would just slough it off onto other people so that's something narcissists are really good at is actually physically taking their mental issues and making them your mental issues and i know it sounds nuts but um just ask an educated psychiatrist or um mental health counselor and they'll tell you that it's quite possible and that it happens all the time um projection so that's mirroring and projection and rage fits so you know whereas people who are on the spectrum will have meltdowns these guys fake it so what they'll do is you know around other people they'll act really nice and calm and normal and then when they're alone with you when they know they can get your mood they'll have this attack of like humongous rage and i have a parent who's like that so I, I was I was already um, I was already aware of this particular aspect of what he was doing, but most of the rest of it I wasn't like I wasn't expecting somebody to just you know just go into a rage and just blame me for you know for their rage their anger 
and then slough it off onto my psyche, you know. Um, obsession. Um, here's the, that's another thing that I really didn't realize was happening. Um, keep in mind, I only dated this guy for very briefly. Like, I don't think it was even a month for the first round of it. And then I had stupid friends in my uh, former religious community that I no longer really participate in partially because of this reason but this friend talked me into going back to the actually going back to this guy several times and because I didn't know what he was and what was happening I fell for this so um yeah so I ended up going back to um going back to him and it apparently was feeding his obsession with me um I'll never forget this I think I went back to him a total of three times so the second time I went back was a couple of years ago. The third time was this year, which was the final nail in the coffin. But the second time was last year, I think before I went to jail and um, for that month. And, and then I found out that he was monitoring the things I was saying um, at my house. So he had access to my property he might have even had a camera trained on my window and I've heard from other YouTubers that there some of their um, narcissistic stalkers actually did do that. They actually did put trail cameras or um, would actually hide outside their window and take notes and shit. And um, the second time I went back to his house, he told me, he described to me in detail a time I'd had sex with this guy at my house and he told me all the things the guy said while we were having sex and he said the exact words so that I would know that he had done that okay so it's no joke I mean they really do do these things and the obsession of course increased and when I found out that the online stalking was happening and confronted him in a really ugly way mind you I was very upset you know so I did it in a super ugly, angry way, and he was soup because he was super ugly and angry and weird, and it just blew up, and that's when it turned into him actually trying to murder me. So that a uh, couple months ago, when I walked out the gate, and he was waiting for me with that sharpened um, chair leg or whatever it was, and then tried to stab me in the face. You know, that's why I still have a scar right here. But um, yeah, anyway. You know, watch out, man. Um, I think in the old days, there were like people who were like celebrities and famous and they got stalked by people like this. But I think now in the new days, when people realize that everybody has a certain amount of um, public exposure, um, everybody has a certain amount of fame or infamous, infam infam uh, infam famousness um infamy um everybody has the potential to have such stalkers and i have friends who are youtubers who have been through this so they know that i'm not joking when i talk about gang stalking abuse um threats to your life having to learn how to defend yourself having to learn self-defense techniques uh vigilance um defending your your boundaries and your borders um you know physically taking care of your um taking care of your health so that you're always prepared to fight so on this is real folks and um if you think that this narcissism thing is just like a rag that i'm on for now it kind of is I probably won't always be making videos like this, but I just want you all to know that um, that you really, you really should pay attention to what I'm saying, because you don't want to end up permanently um, scarred and destroyed by one of these idiots. Okay, you know, don't don't let yourself don't let yourself get scarred and destroyed by people like this. You know. Learn about it now so that you can defend yourself from 
the new dark future of narcissists running amok. Narcissists, people like Donald Trump and his cult, you know, that's a narcissist and they're flying monkeys. Um, this guy and, and, and my neighbors who were joining him and, you know, stalking me and beating me up, you know, assaulting me those five or six times, you know, and the nice thing is just when it happens to you, sit back and collect the evidence, take the videos, take the recordings, you know, show the people who are assaulting you, show the weapons they used. I have pictures of the hammers that were thrown at my head at the, um, the objects that were thrown at me when the guy was trying to run me over in the minivan. Um, I have some videos of the guys that were following me up and down the street. Every time I would go walking people jumping out of the bushes and, you know, stealing my underwear and all that kind of shit. You know, I have, I have that on video. Make sure you get that stuff on video. Make sure you get recordings because they're going to, they're going to for sure. If you're taking recordings, they're doing it too. So they can try to use it against you. But, um, yeah, stay on the right side of the law, get the law involved. The law won't always believe you or help you, but just be persistent. Keep trying, get those temporary restraining orders, you know, go down to the court, find out about stocking resources. Um, talk to people that are not necessarily your best friends because a lot of the times your best friends won't really know what's happening to you and they won't really be able to give you the right advice they won't believe you or um, they'll minimize the danger or they'll recognize it but not know any way to help and you don't want to put your friends in that position so look for professionals look for lawyers look for counselors look for therapists look for medical people Look for people who are um, knowledgeable in, in self-defense, you know, consult, consult as many people as you can find that might have a clue and that you're fairly sure don't have any relation to the narcissist because that's the other thing is, is that if they're in the community and they're, if, even if they're prominent in the community, they may have some link to that person. So be careful because that person may be related in some with via some relationship to that narcissist and they may be supporting them and ganging up on you so don't think that you're not being ganged up on just because you can't see it and watch out for those tactics of the narcissist and i'll post those two videos that i found so helpful in the description so you guys can watch for yourself because those, these guys are brilliant on youtube aloha adam westish out